Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Fence Line. The inspiration for this painting came from the photograph on the right, which I recently took along the roadside. I knew I wanted to create the feeling of winter, and I wanted the viewer to feel the great expanse of this field as you walk this fence line along the trees and get a sense of the distance and the depth in the composition. I began with a sketch using a 2B pencil on a quarter sheet of 140 pound cold pressed Lanaquarrel watercolor paper. I've made the decision to do some masking before I begin painting for this composition. This is a technique I like to use, especially for winter scenes. Uh, it's a good way to preserve the, the, these uh, textures and give the suggestion of snow falling or snow laying on branches. And uh, it allows you to work with very free, loose washes and still preserve very fine details uh, with uh, the white of the paper. And what I'm doing right now is uh, just making some uh, linear marks that, that suggest snow laying on branches and highlights on trees. And uh, as I paint this, I'm, I'm more uh, about trying to create textures that give the impression of my subject rather than trying to, to render individual branches. You can see that I've uh, done quite a bit with the trees and now I'm at the lower uh, right hand corner here, the base of this large tree in the foreground. And I'm using this to create the texture that gives a representation of the, the, the grassy uh, weeds and the the uh, saplings and, the, and the, the various linear shapes that uh, are coming out of the snow, growing out of the ground. When I'm making linear marks like this, uh, I, I think a lot about direction. Uh, the, the grassy shapes have a, a certain feel to the way they, they uh, come out, off the out of the ground and and little uh, saplings and, and different uh, briar like bush elements sometimes have a curvature to them and um, then the branches of the trees have have a direction of their of the, all of their own so I, I very much think about the direction when I'm making these marks uh, to give the representation of the subject so I've done quite a bit of masking with a lot of linear shapes, and I should mention that I'm using a bottle that's got a fine tip, has a steel point on it, and this is one that I filled myself. I find it's a, an inexpensive way uh, to make your own masking fluid pen. If you want more details, you can go to the studio page of my website and click on the box labeled masking supplies. Another technique I like to use in winter scenes to create some texture and give us the, the, the feeling of snow uh, falling on uh, uh, the trees and the branches and just hanging on and gives a little bit of a sparkle is uh, just to splatter some masking fluid using a, a toothbrush. And before I put the masking fluid in the toothbrush, I put a little soap in it and water uh, so that it's easier to clean. But I use inexpensive toothbrushes, obviously. And when they get too uh, gummed up, I just throw them away and get a new one. The colors that I'm using for this painting are ultramarine blue, royal blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and raw umber. I'm going to begin with a sky wash, and I want to convey the feeling of kind of a, a nondescript icy winter sky. So I'm using a mixture of ultramarine blue and raw sienna with quite a bit of water in it. And when it dries, it'll be fairly light. I'm applying this using a uh, round wash brush. It's a silver black velvet jumbo round small brush that I like to use. It's a synthetic blend. I'm gonna carry the, the sky wash to the other side of this uh, foreground tree. And you can see that I'm putting the sky wash over top of the distant tree line, if you can make out the drawing uh, that's at the top there. 
and uh, this paper is wet now so I, I started working wet on dry with this initial wash but now I'm going to do some uh, work uh, that will be working wet in wet and so now I have a mixture with with the raw umber and a little bit of uh, raw sienna and I'm taking this and placing it in the distance there to give the, the suggestion of the distant tree line and because I'm working wet and wet I'm getting nice soft edges and uh, I'm going to take that tone I'm going to carry it along this tree line here if, if you look uh, at my reference you'll see that uh, the, the distant tree line kind of runs right into this one that's coming uh, perpendicular to the distant tree line but coming up to the foreground so uh, you can see that uh, as I do this I'm going to use some some warm and cool colors to differentiate the two there there are times when I would use edge more to differentiate uh, these two sets of tree lines but in this case I, I'm keeping them all soft edge and I'm, I'm not using the edge to define it as much as I am the warm and cool colors So as I apply this uh, wash, even though I'm painting a distant tree line and a tree line that's, that's running from the background towards the foreground, and I'm going to put uh, some tone down here that uh, contours a little bit of the field area too, uh, but I'm, I'm treating it all as one shape, even though these are several different elements. As I apply this wash, I'm applying it as it's one large shape. So here I'm going to give the the suggestion of uh, some some low line areas or some shadows that are are going across this field, but it, it runs right into the other part of the wash that I have. So again, if this is one uh, large shape that I've painted with this wash, even though there in the end there's many elements to it. I'm going to continue this wash into the foreground here as I follow this line of trees um, and, and I have a few breaks in there but it takes that that nice wash and brings it from the background into the foreground I'm going to begin to work in the foreground here putting a wash at the base of the tree I'm using the same colors that I did in, in the other washes. I'm using uh, combinations of ultramarine blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, and at this point I'm really not using much royal blue. I use that in the, the very dark values. As I paint this I'll be using a combination of warm and cool tones and uh, when I want it to, to cool it down, I'll add more blue to the mixture, ultramarine blue. And if I want to warm it up, I'll add either burnt sienna or raw sienna to warm up the mixture. So just varying the ratios of these same colors gives me the, the, the variety of warm and cool tones. Now I'm going to begin to uh, paint uh, this large tree that's in the foreground here and I'm using a, a mixture of raw umber and royal blue to give me a very dark tone I'm using a one inch flat brush here and you can see that I'm dragging the edge uh, or the side of the brush and I'm using the tip uh, to help create some texture there and uh, part of that texture is coming from the, the broken edge that I get uh, as I drag the brush on the side, and the, uh, and the other part of it is coming from some of the masking fluid which was splattered uh, and some of the marks I made with the bottle with the, the masking fluid pen I'm using at the beginning of my painting process. I'm going to continue on uh, making some marks with this one inch flat brush. It's got quite a bit of pigment in it, but it's not fully loaded. If you touch it to the paper, a bead of water is not going to run off, but it still has quite a bit of pigment in it. And I'm using various edges of the brush in combination with the, the textural qualities I'm getting from the masking fluid and from the paper itself 
to uh, give some interesting marks and some random marks that give the suggestion of this ground cover. Still working with this same uh, color mixture and I'm going to take it over to the other side here and still using the one inch brush I'm going to start to paint uh, this other tree here and it's still a, a very dark value it's a much uh, narrower tree it's a very linear shape and it's broken up some uh, by some of the marks that I've made with masking fluid earlier in my process I'm going to use the same uh, mixture to uh, d define uh, the, the fence here which is a bit of a rugged fence that's just kind of uh, leaning in all directions and has a board coming down um, but I want, to, I want it to feel somewhat rugged and, and feel like it's got some snow on it here's another post my post is fairly close to the edge there on the left side I, I need to make sure that I just don't run it to uh, right to the edge where I create a, a undesirable tangent but I think I've got far enough away that doesn't read as a tangent now I'm going to do a little bit of work here in the background here on this distant uh, tree line using uh, a sable just on that's a number uh, for sable that I have it's a, an escoda but uh, really any good sable will work fine or you can even use a synthetic brush it doesn't, it doesn't really matter uh, but I'm trying to give some uh, more definition to the base of that tree line uh, make it a little bit more pronounced and I'm keeping it soft edge on top I made the mark so I've got a, a stronger edge on the bottom but I, I haven't created a hard edge going up into the, the foliage of the tree. I'm going to do some more of that uh, same uh, brushwork on the other side here. So just trying to uh, strengthen that horizon line. I want to further define the, the shape of this, this tree, uh, this tree line that's coming up from the background of the foreground here along the fence line it borders this field so I'm taking a warm tone and giving a little bit more shape to what's going on here you can see I'm just very very loose with a brush stroke and then I'm going to soften it up a little bit with a fine mist spray I want to continue to come up this tree line or along this fence line a little bit with that warm tone to, to continue to lead the eye right along this fence line. So I, I put my mixture there of uh, raw sienna with a little royal blue in it and now I'm taking some water and I'm just softening the, the top edge of that. I want this area of snow that's in the foreground to uh, be a different value than what's happening in the in the open field. So I'm taking a wash of uh, some ultramarine blue with a little raw sienna, and I'm toning down this front area here. Uh, this is the, the same mixture that I used in the sky, but it's a little darker. And you can see that it's leaning more towards the blue side or the cool side. Now I'm going to paint some of these tree shapes that are in this fence line. So I'm using uh, the same mixture that I was using on the, uh, the tree in the foreground. This tree is still pretty close to uh, uh, distance wise to these these two trees here in the foreground and the fence so I've got similar values and um, 
I'm going to lighten those up as I go back and give less, less definition to the, to the tree trunks themselves. So I'm, I'm doing this, this brush work with a half inch uh, brush. This is, uh, again, it's a silver black velvet. The three silver black br velvet brushes that I like to use are the one inch flat, the half inch flat, and the jumbo round small. Those are the brushes that I really like from that line. I, I don't, although I have some, I don't often use the uh, smaller um, sizes in this, this brush line. So you can see I'm just touching my brush and giving a suggestion of some tree trunks there. So I want, I want to lessen that definition as I go back. I'm going to take this same uh, paint mixture and I'm going to use a, a liner brush here. This is the larger of the two liner brushes that I use. This is a uh, size 6 I believe. And uh, I have, uh, as with all my other supplies, I have the, the two liner brushes I use listed on my uh, the studio page of my website, rservitsart.com. So you can find those there. And uh, I'm, I'm making uh, uh, just some, some linear marks here to give the suggestion of these branches coming in. And this is a, a really tangled assemblage of branches coming off these trees and through the trees and into the ground. So I'm not picking individual branches out of the photograph. I'm, I'm getting a feel for what's going on there, the patterns and the, the, the directions and the shapes. And I'm just giving that suggestion with my brush marks. Now I'm going to uh, continuing to make some of these marks and, and as I make these marks the, the things that I think about are are the direction and uh, I, I try to break these lines up so they're not just one continuous line because there's lots of overlap so this combination of direction and overlap are all elements that help uh, create depth in the painting the, the changes in value, the dark over light, the light over dark. And that's one of the things I like about this technique also is I've masked areas here that will produce, well, in the end, white linear marks. And I've come over top of those with uh, a dark mark. So I have overlap. And there's times when um, I take the masking fluid off, I'll... Uh, still go back in and paint uh, a tone over top of the areas that were mass so they're, they end up being a, a purer, uh, brighter, light value but they still have some color to them. In this scene, because it's a snow scene, I won't be doing it, it really much of that. So, um, But it does, it, the technique does help create a lot of overlap and give some, some dimensional qualities to the painting that I like. To this point, all these marks I've been making have been linear, but as, as you look at uh, these scenes like this, there's always some, some dead leaves or some uh, berries or broken branches hanging on that, that are uh, more static uh, shapes. So uh, I'm going to put a, put a little bit of that around uh, some of these linear marks that I've already made. So it just creates that feeling of some leaves and berries and things hanging on here to, to the branches. I switched to the smaller liner brush that I use, which is a, a number one, and I'm making some uh, thinner linear marks. So there's some, some branches hanging off of this large tree that are coming down off the side. And I'm going to take this and um, add to some of the brushwork that I've already done. But it's a thinner line than what I was getting with my li other liner brush. And I'm going to take this same liner brush and I'm going to make uh, some linear marks up in the trees here to uh, give that suggestion of all the branches that are entangled uh, in the trees here on this tree line. 
I'm obviously not going to try and paint every branch that's on these trees and I try to describe some of it with the earlier wash that I put on just to suggest the volume of those branches as they come together they kind of form a shape um, so just a, just a slight indication of some of that and here I'm taking a brush with a dark value uh, and just just putting a little bit uh, uh, some finer brush work on some of these areas so I'm using this quill brush that I like to use and it's again it's this dark value mixture of raw umber and royal blue I'm going to come back in with my one inch brush here that's loaded up with a dark mixture and I want to uh, try and get that uh, tree just a little darker on a what would be a shadowed side now I have a mixture that has some ultramarine blue with uh, a little bit of burnt sienna in it not a lot it's still leaning towards the blue side and it's thinned down quite a bit but it's, it's still a light middle value and I'm just touching some of the areas of the snow to give the suggestion of some some shadows and uh, I'm going to use that mixture here in the foreground to help uh, give uh, the feeling of the contour of the ground here that it's not just flat it's it's irregular and and it's a bit of a slope so I'm going to use this wash to to give that suggestion of the direction of of the ground itself Now I've loaded up my quill brush again with a dark value and I'm just going to uh, do, make some smaller shapes just to uh, give a little bit more definition to the ground cover and, and suggest some pockets of uh, areas where it's a little deeper into the grass and some, some darker shadows amongst these branches and grassy shapes and bushes that I've made here. So just some, some finishing touches here. I'm going to move to the other side and just do some smaller shapes still dark value just trying to bring a little more definition to a few areas here again I'm just making some some small brush marks uh, in the snow just it doesn't take much but just a few marks just helps carry that value through the composition and uh, just little suggestions of texture and uh, irregularities uh, in the ground now I'm going to use my pickup eraser to remove this masking and keep in mind that my, pap my paper is thoroughly dried at this point you never want to do this with with your paper still wet so as I, I start to take off this uh, that the masking fluid which I applied earlier you can start to see uh, the white of the paper starting to come through where those uh, areas that were masked and you can see how you start to get this overlapping quality and these textural qualities that uh, help add depth to the composition now I've removed the masking fluid there's a few shapes here that I want to touch up I got too much of a, a too large of a shape there so I'm just breaking it up a little bit by making a few touches with my brush with a dark value and just here and there just a couple adjustments I want to make not much and 
And one final element here that I need to add is the wire on this fence. So I'm using my small liner brush with a, a, a middle value gray to just give the indication of this fence going across. And one of the things that helps it uh, stand out from all these other linear marks that are going all over the place is the direction. So keep in mind that direction because all those other marks are going in every which way direction and they're curved. And this is a very straight uh, line that's running parallel to the horizon so it stands out. So it's that direction and the variation of the, the linear mark itself being straight that make it stand out and read as a fence amongst all this other linear activity that's going on. I'm going to put a mat on this to get a good look at it. And there's my painting fence line. I hope you enjoy this and want to give it a try. It's a, a fairly simple composition. It doesn't have a lot of drawing, just some, some large major shapes. And you can just experiment with some of the uh, texture and some of the techniques to uh, uh, create this interesting winter scene. If you haven't already, check out Rick Sorts Watercolor Friends and Subscribers on Facebook. And if you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page on my website, rsorsart.com. While there, you can also sign up for my newsletter. And if you have questions, you can always email me at contact at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.